Hi, this is Debbie and thank you for joining me today as I take a look at the new Ulta New Watercolour Brush Markers. Let's take a closer look at the markers and then later on I have a card using them. I was delighted to see Ulta New expand their watercolour range with their watercolour brush markers and as soon as they were released I immediately put in an order and I'm excited to share my thoughts on them with you today. The blurb from the back of the packet says, The barrel is filled with water-based colour and coordinates with our line of inks. The flexible yet sturdy bristles on the brush tip allow you to form both broad and fine strokes. Colour can be applied straight from the marker or diluted with water for a softer look. To be honest, I'm not a fan of water brushes for water, preferring a normal paintbrush to control the amount of water I'm using. However, water colour in a water brush? Now that's interesting. Each marker has a clear plastic cap. Removing the cap, I was impressed with the fine point on the marker brush. When you apply pressure to the brush, it splays out and this allows for broader brush strokes. But a good point to note is that when lifting the brush again, the point springs back into place. There are 10 markers in the packet and when you first get a marker out of the packet, you will notice that it has a lime green plastic ring. Unscrew the barrel of the brush and remove the plastic ring and then screw the barrel back in. You'll find some resistance, but keeping, keep turning until the barrel is fully screwed in and then start to squeeze gently on the sides of the barrel where it says push until the colour starts to flow through the bristles of the brush. I'm keeping this part of the video in real time so you can see how long it takes and it does take a little while and I did keep pressing on the barrel until eventually colour started to appear. As I mentioned there are 10 colours in the pack and each marker will need prepping in the same way so make sure that you allow that extra time when you first use these. You can just start to see the colour working its way down the brush now. This colour is called emerald and is a rich green. At first the brush is a bit dry and you get those broken brush marks typical of a dry brush, but another squeeze and the colour started flowing well. I love how deep and rich the colour is because this means that you have lovely dark colours at full strength, but can dilute that saturated colour down with a wet brush to give mid and light values. I found that the watercolour in these markers really moved well in the water was easy to dilute and move about and you've got lovely rivulets of colour spreading down through the water. You can add the marker directly to the wet paint and again this shows how well the colour moves in the water as it creates bursts of colour with the lightest touch. So taking these two examples as I would think about when using them when colouring, then you can lay down colour and that fine point to the brush means that you can add the faintest of lines if you so wish and then draw that colour out with the, wa with the water. Equally, you can lay the water down first and then add the marker directly to the water and then move it around with your brush. Personally, I prefer the greater control you get with the first method and having experimented this way, I'll be using the marker directly and blending out with water when I create my card. I also know aren't the only watercolour brush markers on the market and here I have Kiritaki Zig Clean Colour Brush Marker and a Nouveau Aquaflow Marker. For each, I've chosen a rich green to be comparable as possible to the Ulta New Marker. I'm going to test each of the markers in the same way, by drawing a line directly to the watercolour card and then blending out with a wet paintbrush. Working from left to right is the Zigling Colour Brush Marker in green, then the Nouveau Aquaflow Marker in Evergreen Fern, and then the Old New Marker in Emerald. All three give beautiful results. I prefer the look of the rivulets of colour that you get particularly with the Old New Marker, although you can see that to a lesser extent with the Zig Marker too. The Nouveau Aquaflow marker gave a smoother blend, but personally I prefer the character of the other two. When you compare the pens themselves, I guess it comes down to personal preference as with any pen. Do you prefer a narrow barrel such as the Zig marker, or the broader barrel of the Nouveau marker? Do you prefer the clean lines of the white barrels of the Zig and Nouveau markers, or do you prefer that you can see the watercolour in the Ultra New marker and will know when you are running low? I will say I like the clear colour markings on the cap of the Nouveau markers, Zig does have an end of the pen marked with a colour, um, but currently Old New doesn't have any markings other than the sticker across the barrel of the pen. As far as the brushes are concerned, the Zig marker has the shortest brush tip, the Nouveau marker has the longest and broadest, and the Old New marker has it's an in-between. As you would expect given this, the marks created when splaying the bristles of the brush to their maximum fit with the size of the brush tip. The Zig gives the smallest mark, followed by Old New marker and then the Nouveau marker creates the largest mark. The brush on each marker fades to a nice point, but when I tried to draw a thin line with the pens, the Old New brush tip gave the finest line, 
followed by the Zig and then the Nouveau marker. Let's move on. I prepped the remaining brush markers from the set and in doing so had a pile of the plastic rings left over. You can keep these and put them back in the marker when travelling to prevent leakage or equally you can do as I did and simply recycle them. I'm going to swatch out the 10 colours of Ultra New Markers and to do so I'm going to use the colour swatcher set from Waffle Flower. This has the perfect stamp for swatching out this set, a grid of 10 and for each column there are three rectangles. I stamped the image with Versafine Onyx Black Ink, which is a waterproof ink, on Archer's Cold Press Watercolour Card and then die cut with a matching die. I painted the markers at full strength in the top rectangle. I mixed a dilute colour for each marker for the second rectangle down and then for the largest rectangle I applied a band of the marker directly onto the card and then pulled the colour out with a wet brush. Remembering my initial experiments with these markers, I also found it helpful to apply the marker directly to the top of the largest rectangle to really show the depth of colour at full strength. I worked my way through the colours in the order listed on the back of the marker packet and I will keep this swatch in the packet along with the markers so that whenever I want to use them I have this colour reference to work from. So here you have the 10 colours swatched out and based on how they behaved while I completed this swatch, I now have a good idea of how I'd like to use them when colouring. The particular group of 10 colours is called the Spring Garden Set and so I guess there may be more sets coming in the future. As the name suggests, the colours included in this set are perfect for watercolouring flowers and so we pulled out the Sketch Flower Set from Sam's Stamp that I've been meaning to colour since it came out in their October card kit. I stamped the full image on a piece of Archer's Cold Press Watercolour Card um, sized to 5.5 by 7.5 inches so that I had plenty of room and could trim the piece down later on once I decided on how I wanted to present the watercolour on a card. I stamped the bouquet in Antique Linen Distress Ink. This is my favourite ink for no-line watercolouring as the light ink blends and merges with the watercolour and isn't visible in the final piece. I then attached this to a board and to prevent warping, although I actually didn't use that much water and so could have omitted this step, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. Using my experiments with swatching these markers, I drew with the fine tip of the marker in areas I expected there to be shadows, the base of a leaf or the intersection between petals, and then drew out the watercolour with a paintbrush. When the shadows weren't quite deep enough with this method, I'd go back in and touch the marker to the wet areas to increase the intensity of colour. I'm not sure how well you can see this in the video, but I found it interesting that the markers move so well with water that often when I was applying the marker, it seeped along the stamp lines, presumably where the paper was still damp from the antique linen ink. With delicate images such as this, I found the fine tip of the brush marker to be particularly helpful, as it enabled me to get into the nooks and crannies and add just the right amount of colour to blend out. During the painting process, you will see me mix colours in two ways. Firstly, by scribbling a little colour onto my glass mat, I can pick up that colour with a paintbrush and then apply to the card. This allows me to control the amount of colour I'm applying. I felt that because the watercolour in these markers moves so well with water, that if I went directly to the card with a the marker, there was a risk that too much colour would be added and then all I wanted with this method is to add a hint of a second colour for interest. However, effectively I am mixing the colours on the paper itself. Secondly, I mixed two colours on my glass mat to create a new colour and then pick this up with a paintbrush to use on the card. So in this case, I'm mixing the colours on the glass mat and not on the paper. An example of this is where I mix the ruby light and moss markers, effectively red and green, and those who know colour theory will know that these two colours are complementary colours, and mixing complementary colours, you get a neutral, in this case brown. And I wanted a deeper brown for the stems of one of the plants that wasn't provided in the colours within the set. I also use the properties of complementary colour mixing with these berries, I felt the Midnight Violet colour was a little too vibrant for my autumn berries. Midnight Violet is effectively a purple colour and the complementary colour to purple is yellow. If you mix purple and yellow together, you will get a neutral colour. However, by adding just a touch of one colour, it knocks back the brightness and so I added touches of warm sunshine to the berries and this muted the brightness of the purple slightly, but I was careful not to add too much yellow to the point that I'd get a neutral colour from them mixing together. At this point, I'm really happy with what I've coloured so far. However, I find I often have trouble colouring flowers where the angle you are looking at them is straight on into the flower centre. I personally find it hard to get the definition between one petal and the next in this style. 
and I prefer to colour flowers which are set at an angle where it's more obvious, at least to me, where shadows and highlights would be. However, I'm having a go here and using the tip of the Rubellite marker to draw along the stamp lines and then pull the colour out with a damp brush. I'm dotting around the various blooms so that the water has time to dry off before I add more colour so that the watercolour doesn't move and blend into each other. I'm using Autumn Blaze on the side angled blooms and adding in Dusk, a lovely muted blue, to knock back the vibrancy of the orange. I love muted colours and as I had an Autumn bouquet in mind for this card, I found some of the colours in the Spring Garden set to be a bit more vibrant than I wanted. But that's the joy of watercolour in that you can mix and layer colours until you get what you want. So for the Autumn Blaze blooms I mentioned I'm using Dust to mute the orange. And I also bought it in a little moss to bring the vibrancy of the rubellite down a touch. You will see as I continue to colour that I'm trying in to bring in other colours too to these swirly blooms, trying to find what I wanted. And often these blooms look like a hot mess. However, I persevered and in the very end of this card, I was happy with these flowers. And so I encourage you that if you aren't happy with how things are going when watercolouring, then to keep going and try different techniques and colour mixes until you get to somewhere that you are happy with the result. I want to leave as much of the colouring of this card into this video and so I've sped the video up but it will still be longer than my usual videos especially as I have a review of these markers at the beginning. I hope that you prefer to see this full colouring process but please leave a comment on YouTube or on my blog as to which you prefer. Do you prefer short to the point videos or longer more in-depth ones? For now I'll leave you with some music while I continue to watercolour and then we'll be back later on to talk you through how I finished the colouring off and how I made this piece into a card. So by this point I was realising that I wasn't going to be able to rescue those swirly blooms with just watercolour alone and I pulled out my favourite Castell pencils to add more shadows and highlights. I've used pencils over watercolours a few times in the past and it can be a great way to step up a piece. Firstly when using pencils always make sure to sharpen them as a blunt line isn't going to be attractive at all. 
I use darker colours to add to the shadows and also to add details such as veining on the petals of the centre lightly coloured flower. I also used a cream pencil to blend colours together and to add a few highlights back in. The nature of pencils means that you can use lighter colours over the top of darker ones and they will still show up. However, I wasn't happy with the highlights I'd gotten with the pencils and so I turned to my favourite way to add highlights and white details, that of using white gouache. I mixed a little water into some white gouache to the point that I could paint with it without it being gloopy, but at the same time it was still nice and opaque, and then painted this over various parts of the bouquet, the veins of the leaves, the highlights on the berries, and most importantly to me, I added in sweeping seeker shaped curves to those swirly flowers, and in my opinion that is the step that rescued those flowers and I started to like them again after having been rather disappointed in them up to this point. I also mixed a little of the rubellite marker into the white gouache to create an opaque pink gouache mixture and use this on the blooms too. I do find a good white gouache to be such a handy supply to have and if you've not got a tube I highly recommend adding one to your basket the next time you shop. Finally I dried the panel fully and then I took my favourite Perfect Pearl solution in a mini mister and use the tube from inside to splatter a sparkly mixture onto the piece. I make this solution by adding a scoop or two of Perfect Pearls to the Mini Mister and then topping up with water just to make sure to give it a good shake and mix it together before using it to add lovely sparkly splatter. I gave my glass mat a good wipe down with a wipe to get rid of all the watercolour paint and splatter and then trimmed the panel down to size to fit a near desert storm car base. Before I start adhering the panel down though, I want to make sure I had a sentiment in place. A number of times I've fixed things down only to regret it later because I wanted to add something or adjust the sizing. So for the sentiment I picked out the tiny word set from Simsys Stamp. I love a small banner sentiment to add to cards. You have a greeting there but it doesn't compete or distract from the time and effort put into the colouring. And so I stamped the You're In My Heart greeting on a scrap of slate card with clear embossing ink and then sprinkled with white embossing powder before heat setting and trimming to a banner. I added foam adhesive to the back of the watercolour panel and to the sentiment banner and then adhered them to the Nina Desert Storm card base. To ensure the sentiment was on straight I checked with a T-square ruler. This is a tool I turn to again and again as I don't seem to have a good eye for straight lines. Finally I added some pastel paradise sequins from Little Things from Lucy's cards and kept them in place with Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. So that completes my card using the old new watercolour brush markers to paint the Samsis Stamp Sketch Flowers set. In conclusion, these markers are great to work with, although I'd love if the markers had coloured caps or some way of determining easily which marker is which. And you may have noticed from my hands that the colour in them is temporarily staining. This wore off by the day after filming. But those are minor details. For me, I like the strength of the watercolour included in the barrels, that they dilute down beautifully and the fine tip to the brush is a bonus. These markers are a welcome addition to my watercolouring arsenal. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at lamedoodedesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you could subscribe to this channel. Thanks and I'll see you next time.